My name's Jason Berry and I'm Group Sales and Marketing Director at Crystal Specialist Finance. I've personally spent over 25 years in the financial services marketplace and I've been blessed to work with some amazingly positive and extremely talented people through these years. In recent times, however, I've watched with interest as many other sectors have invested time, energy and cash to support individuals challenged by their mental health, whilst our mortgage lending environment remain pretty quiet on the subject. Consequently, in August of this year, myself and a few like-minded peers decided to create a campaign which could make a real difference in 2021 and beyond. Crystal Specialist Finance are therefore proud to be a lead sponsor alongside mental health charity, Mind. As part of the campaign, each month I will be talking to guests who operate in our sector and who have been affected by enormous challenges in their lives and who crucially have found pathways to overcome huge adversity. Importantly, at the end of each discussion, there will be information shown which enables our listeners to connect with our guests post the event, so any questions or support people may require can be understood and followed up. Additionally, there will be some excellent hints and tips available from Mind. I hope you enjoy. So we kick off our conversations by speaking with Scott Howitt, who is Sales Director at Chart One Mortgage Services. Scott, we have known each other for many years and a huge thank you for joining and agreeing to support our campaign. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Very, very well. Excellent, excellent. Listen, so the plan is really to reflect back on the, the journey working within our sector and then I suppose spend a little bit of time discussing family and how you've juggled the priorities really, that work-life balance, because I know you're an extremely hard-working guy. Yeah. But I suppose before we um, do that, let's go all the way back to, to, to when you did have hair and you were at school and what was that <laughs> dream job? What were, you, what were you really hoping and aspiring to when you were in that, that, that school environment? Yeah, I had, I had two two dream jobs. To be fair, uh, the first was um, the first was to play for my beloved uh, football team, Manchester City. So I had a dream of becoming Paul Power for many many years. Uh, for those of you that know Paul Power, and and the second one was was um, latterly uh, sort of throughout my teenage years, I went on to play in, and still do indeed in a in a in a band. Um, so my second my second dream job was to become. Uh, was to become John Taylor from Duran Duran. Um, un unfortunately, I'd never never reached those dizzy heights, but they were my dream jobs: uh, a footballer or a rock star. Um, oh, wow. both. So, you, so the bar was <laughs> the, the bar was set high, that's for sure. And so he, he had flowing locks, if I remember rightly, that Duran Duran. So yeah. uh, it looked like more than instrument that. playing that would have been a challenge for you. Absolutely. Well, it would. Looking at me now, you'd probably say that, yeah. But um, I had the uh, I had the perm and the uh, the streaks. So uh, yeah, um, back in the day. <laughs> what a vision! What a vision that is. And what, what job did you actually do when you left school? Uh, so I left school in uh, eighty seven um, secondary school. I actually went on to do uh, five years at college, um, a couple of years doing uh, graphic design, and then um, the last three years spent doing uh, advertising. Um, believe it or not, uh, pre pre the digital era. So everything was drawn out with pens and, and paint and all the rest of it. But yeah, that's what I did when I left school um, for, for that period of time. Yeah, and, and uh, still look back on it very, very fondly now. OK. And, and what jobs did you actually have before moving into financial services? Yeah, the, fir the first job, interestingly, I had I worked in a supermarket stacking shelves. And then um, the first job I, I ever had, interestingly, uh, was not one which was by design. Um, I ended up, uh, or the first job I had in financial services was straight, straight from there really. I worked for, I worked for a company which is still actually trading now uh, it, it, around this area where I live, a company called Norton Finance, okay. uh, who were a, a specialist loan broker, um, just getting into, they were just getting into the mortgages at the time when I started, when I joined to be fair. Uh, can you remember the, the, the name of the first person who hired you? I can, yeah. The uh, the first guy who ever hired me into Norto Finance was a guy called Andy Marshall, um, who was a bit of a mentor for a couple of years. A really nice, you know, I've lost touch with him now, but a terrific guy, really nice guy. Wow, wow. And what, what, what do you remember about the, I suppose, first few years in that job? How long were you there for? Uh, I was there for three years. Uh, uh, started off at the very bottom, just doing sort of unsecured loans, uh, in, in, an interesting business because they used to do a they used to do a double page spread in all the Sunday Sunday rags, uh, which cost an absolute fortune at the time. But 
Monday morning was absolute bedlam because the phones were just ringing off the hook. So yeah, started off doing unsecured loans, then into secured loans and um, pre pre credit score, pre uh, digital AIPs, everything handwritten, and you used to have to take it down to the branch and they did the score, and it was yeah, it was um, it was a good learning curve. Yeah, I remember it well. And what, what about early ambitions? So what, at what point did you, you know, realise that this was maybe going to be the sector you wanted to, to stay in? And what, what, what early ambitions did you have? Yeah, I, I suppose at that, at that moment in time, there were, I didn't really have that many ambitions, to be honest. It, it was, a, you know, it was a job and, and I was living the, 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 the life in the sort of um, early to mid 90s, which was a, an interesting period of time for a, for a 20 odd year old, uh, as, as I'm sure you'll agree um I so it was it was literally <laughs> it was literally um you know it's just a time where um it, it was just about going to work and just getting your head down and all the rest of it and i think i think the first sort of real time i thought actually this could be a career which is completely the complete opposite of what i'd been trained to do to be honest which was you know this creative sort of role and play music and all the rest of it into an environment which was actually uh, the polar opposite but um, I suppose the thing I enjoy most, and I still do to this day, is is just working with people, just working with other people, talking to customers, whether that be, you know, the consumer customer, whether it be, uh, you know, what I deal with now, builder customers or, you know, lender customers or whoever it may be. That That's the bit I really enjoyed. And, and I think the bit uh, which has lived with me throughout is I, I like to see where you start something off for, for, for somebody, maybe a client, a mortgage or a, a policy or whatever, and you get it to the end and, and you know, the, the, the delight the customer takes out of that. I, I really feel that. And I still do that now. I still, I still do that now where I get involved in a case in my day-to-day -day sort of life and, uh, and I see somebody moving into a house, getting the keys for a property. It's still something I thrive off. Mm. Well, I think, I think we both share a passion for other Man City. It's this, um, helping ensure customers are really informed we're passionate about customers making good decisions yeah. excellent customer outcomes and just yes i suppose satisfying the the the, 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 the dreams and aspirations that they're looking for is yeah it's usually rewarding isn't it yeah, yeah. And, it is at, at what, and at what at what point did you um did you meet lisa was that just after after norton or at what point did the yeah the the, the, the family life journey actually commence so, so Lisa and I, my wife and I have been together, uh, interestingly, and some won't believe this, but I actually met my wife. I was in the second year of, of, uh, of school. So I was 12 and she would have just, she'd just come up to, to grammar school. So she was 11 and I got introduced to her over a, a, a dinner, a dinner time jam roly poly by my cousin. And we, uh, we started courting, uh, call, call it courting them days. And um, yeah, and, and been together ever since. So it's, um, wow. yeah, a long time. <laughs> wow, so that hit, I mean, at 12 and 11. 30, 37, 37 years. Wow, so that really is a, a, a school romance. Yeah, I'm surprised she stuck with me all in time. I'm used to <laughs> what, what about when you when you maybe, you'd started this, this, this career journey with Norton and, and yeah, we got, we got, we, uh, as when I started there, we got married a, a year later, obviously, we, having been together, lived together, for, obviously, previous to that. So we, we got married in 95 and, and, um, and started a family, uh, sorry, got married in 96, started a family in 95 with our first daughter, Megan. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, um, you know, the, 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 I look back at all them times, you know, with fondness, really. I think, um, you know, we did it very traditionally. It was a very traditional sort of setup and, and still is. Even our, even our, our, our eldest daughter, Megan, she's gone on to do virtually the same thing in the much the same way that we did it. So it's a very traditional setup. And that's just that's just how we are, to be honest. But, yeah, it's... Um, you know, uh, as I said, it was pretty, the job was pretty secure. The career was pretty secure at that point. I'd made a commitment to that was what I was going to do. And, and the mortgage, the mortgage side came around, around about, they, they all coincided with the same time, really. So um, I, I eventually ended up moving away from Norton Finance in about 90, early 97. And um, the, the, the journey continued. I, I went on to work for Halifax Property Services, which at that time, for, for those of you that remember Halifax Property Services, was a, a sort of different entity to the bank uh, or, or the building society as it was at that moment in time. Um, you know, and it was a, that was a, just a, 
that was a brilliant little team that we had in our office, a real, real great team, very close knit. And again, I look back at those people with fondness, you know, the guy who ran the, the property services um, office that we were in, the, 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 the shop that we were in, he was a terrific guy. And I learned a load from him and I learned a load about mortgages really then, because that was interestingly, whilst it was Halifax above the door, you, you didn't need to put mortgages to the Halifax. You could broke them to anybody. So that was the that was a, that was a really interesting time. So it was um, yeah, it was good. It was really good. And and how did you manage to combine the I suppose the, the work life balance? So having uh, uh, having kids and starting the family, and obviously having the yeah the ambitions you had to yeah develop. I suppose what was now the yeah this Halifax property services role. How how, how did you manage juggling the priorities? Yeah, it was interesting. It was really, really interesting because um, obviously we just got one child at that moment in time. And, and they, th those were the days where I was really heavily involved with the band. And we still talk about, we spoke about it yesterday in actual fact. And, and I was out mm, three, four nights a week gigging and stuff up and down the, up and down the M1 and, and various places over the weekend and stuff. But um, it, it, it's, we seem to just we seem to just get on with it, and we really enjoyed our time at that moment. So I, I, the one thing I would say to 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 you know to myself now is is I couldn't do it now. That would be absolutely impossible because it's a young man's game. Getting in the back of a van and travelling up and down the M1 is a young man's game. It takes me three days to recover now, but um, but yeah, it, you know we um, we enjoyed our, our our sort of early years of of being uh, parents. It was a it was a good time, really really good time, and I think we. We managed certainly. I think if you met her now, you'd, you'd agree she's, you know, my eldest daughter, who's grown up to be a, you know, terrific young lady, and she's she's got some really good discipline. So I think we brought her up the right way. Good. And how big did the band get? So at its peak. Do you imagine John yeah, said Duran Duran before? So no, it wasn't quite. Right, it wasn't quite. Right. Yeah, it wasn't quite that. I, my, my um, if it's a claim to fame, the the biggest gigs we did were at places like Nottingham Rock City. We played the Astoria in London. We supported the Stereophonics uh, once. Um, we had various record companies that wanted to do this and that was, but it's like anything else. Uh, the, the record industry, interesting, the music industry, I think is 50% is, is down to talent. Um, and I think it's 50% down to luck. And you really do have to be in the right place at the right time with the right songs. And um, yeah, we were close. We were close, but I have no regret. I have no regret. You know, it, it's um, it was great. It was absolutely great, and it still continues to be. You know, we do it part time every now and again now, and it, and, it, and I still enjoy it uh, for different reasons. Now uh, it's more of a release than it was then. It was all you know, all intent on getting a record deal and 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 what have you. But uh, yeah, it's um, no regrets with it. Yeah, really enjoyed it. And after Megan, the, the the family continued to yeah to grow. And yeah. we as as the family was growing, were you still was was it still Halifax Property Services you were working with at the time? No, I, interestingly, uh, it's, it's a very interesting story. I I used to um, I used to write about 20, 25 mortgages a month with Halifax, and um, I got this sort of bit of a reputation. If if they went in to see Scott at Halifax Property Services. Yeah, any other broker would would not steal that deal basically afterwards. So, I used to uh, I used to get this guy call me on a on a Friday. He used to ring me religiously on a Friday afternoon, and his name was Steve Mansfield. And um, he said to me, um, "When are you going to come and work for us?" And I used to say, "I'm not going to come and work for you. I'm, I'm happy where I am." Anyway, it went on for months and months, and it became a bit of a running joke. This, to be honest, because he used to ring the reception first, and. Um, and then when the, 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 the what, what happened was um, the, um, the property services basically got got taken on by the bank as it was at that time. And the guy who was the property services manager, the FS guy, said to me, you need to get out. And he said, it's not going to be what you think it's going to be. You're going to be working for the bank. Not that that's a bad thing, but he said, I know what you like and you'll, you'll not like it. Anyway, this guy rang me this particular time and was immaculate impeccable he, he rang me this one friday i said yeah i'll come for an interview and then uh, this was 1999 so 21 years ago and i went for the interview and he said you steal so many of our deals and i, and I signed on the dotted line there and then and, and that was a business called whitehall financial as it was then um small brokerage in in, in rotherham and uh, latterly went on to become uh, the business uh, took on a different a different guys in the name of mortgage talk and, and I worked there for uh, what would have been 15 years, 
14, 15 years. And again, that was a that was a great business, a, a really terrific business. And I look right on that business, I look at it very, very fondly. The people made that business. It was a great business. Yeah, and I think that's probably when our paths first first crossed in um, the probably the uh, early two thousands. Yeah, right. And and I mean at that time you were obviously you know an expert when it came to yeah to, to, to business writing and the new build sector um seemed to be a a a, a, a place you elevated towards or or you know, migrated across to. And you know. Yeah. Quite usually, that's quite a, a, a stressful environment. That that new build marketplace with developers and also you know, very emotive buyers who are looking for yeah for for, for 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 timelines, which can be a bit of a, a challenge. So, how did you how, how did you manage with the, the the stresses and strains of of those demands? Yeah, it was it was it was interesting. Again, interesting times. I mean, you t- you're talking about the early two thousands, mid two thousands, where that the business mortgage talk was predominantly a franchise based model, uh, lots of estate agents, but it got, into, it got an internal team. And, and that team actually um, had honed its skill over a number of years in terms of telephone based sales. And that was the first time ever that I really thought mm, that there's some mileage in this. This is, this is, the, this, this is the future. And face to face was still very, uh, you know, that it was still very popular at that moment in time. but. We got this model which was moving in that direction, and we started dealing with developers. And developers, you know, in the main, uh, you know, can be can be uh, very demanding. Um, you know, that they can be uh, demanding of your time, your resource, your efforts. But the 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 demand that that's put upon you, and it still is to this day. You know, is the reward versus that demand. I I, I always think, you know, is is always worth it you know the, the, what a developer essentially is looking to do is put place a place business in your hands or a client in your hand for you to look after them that they, they entrust in you that customer for you to move that customer forward and you know they've got a product to sell and you've got to get you've got to endeavor to get that that, that them to, to that place where they're able to do that confidently they can take the reservation and they can move forward with it so i think whilst it is demanding um, I think other, other sectors of the market are, are equally as demanding, if, if not more, to be honest, because you just get used to it. It's just second nature to me. Um, you know, I think I think someone coming into the new build arena would probably think, wow, that's that is, you know, that's all encompassing. It is. It is. But um, new build is born out of, of, of a good process, good relationships and trusting in each other and, and getting things to to the end, if you like. You know, and, and I suppose it, it, it is. And it can be stressful at times, but um, it, it, you learn over time how to, to sort of, you get used to it. You just get used to it. You get used to dealing with it. You know, you get used to handling that, that, that pressure. And I don't, I don't, it's funny from time to time, I, I perceive it as pressure. Um, but m- the majority of the time it's just putting a puzzle together. That's what it is. It's just putting a puzzle together. Uh, client, lender, solicitor, builder, that's all it is. And you're, you're in the middle of it. That's still the bit, even now, that I, I love to do. I really, really enjoy that. It's just, it's just, I just love doing it. I think, I think what what I've observed over the years with yourself is um, is an explicitness around the honesty. And I think if you're honest and you manage expectations in an honest way, it, you know, facts are facts, aren't they? If if if, if it's going to take ten days to get a, a piece of post looked at, if it's going to take um, a month to get a, a completion through or whatever, as long as you understand and you share that in a very honest and transparent way, then you manage the expectations, don't you? I think, I think you have to. I think you have to, because I think if you fail to do that, or, or you, you, you've just got to line yourself up to be, well, for other people to be disappointed, to be honest. I mean, I, I've always I've always been just very transparent, just very honest, black and white, cards on the table type of person, where these are the facts, this is what we're dealing with. You know, I, I think where a lot of people... There's a there's a there's an interesting saying that's one of our values that we've instilled in the business is is which is which is you know uh, do what you say you're going to do and that's so important if you say you're going to do it just do it just just get on with it and do it and people will never fault you and they'll never they'll never criticize you for trying your best they, they never will because because as long as you can demonstrate that's what I've done that's what I did um, you know whether it's successful or unsuccessful people. Well, you know, they'll very rarely criticise you for doing that because they go, actually, you tried your best. You did try. And sometimes, sometimes, you know, we do. It, it doesn't get to where you want it to be. But if you've tried your utmost, and, and I say that to my kids all the time, just try your best, you know, and that's all you can do. 
Um, just, 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 just put, get your head down and get on with it. And I think if you do that, you get a lot of respect. There's a lot of integrity around that sort of thing. And you, you had some talented people around you back then as well. I mean, look, I remember a couple of the the, you know, the directors who were working alongside you, and they were, you know, a couple of them certainly had the X factor about them and did keep you on the toes whenever you were, I remember trying to you know, negotiate various uh, yeah, procuration fees. And I always felt like, you know, I'd, uh, yeah, I had to check my pockets. I still had my wallet in it at the at the end of leaving the leaving the meeting. So you know, some 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 good people around you who set some again, so, so, no no you know, no doubt set some you know, incredibly challenging targets along the way. So as as that business was growing and developing with you know, with the talent around it, again, how how are you managing on on, on the, the home front as well to you know, to keep everything? One of the big things that they all believed in was was you know, it, it's. It, Everything about what you did, because it's all all in all all consumed. You spend a lot of time at work, was to make sure you did have that quality time outside of work. And we shared collectively, all our families shared some 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 brilliant times. You know, we involved each other um, in a social aspect, not just in a business aspect. And we knew we knew where the line was separated between the two. And we worked we worked incredibly hard on that business, long hours. Lot of hard graft, lot of lot of resource, lot of brain power, um, but the other side of it was they 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 understood acutely that you you know when you're on holiday or you go on holiday or you have to go and do that was your time you, you you know you switch off and you go and recharge your batteries and and again you know I would say that to anybody now you know managing people now as, as I was managed then is you know as long as you work hard you deserve that time you've got to go away and you've got to recharge those batteries seems to be every day seems to be more realization around you know social media and emails and all the rest of it and and your phone's constantly ringing so again you've got to have that downtime because otherwise you end up in a, a bit of a, a, a brain you mess, you mess your bloody brain in terms of being able to segment what's work what's not work when do i switch off and all the rest of it and that's that's that, that that's that's difficult that's a difficult discipline but if you get it right um then, then, it, then it will work for for, for uh, and we still burning the midnight oil with doing the, the the band stuff as well at that time, or had the band stuff started to take a bit of a backseat. Yeah, the the um, we um, the, the band thing was an interesting thing because the, the sort of pinnacle of the band was um, um, anybody that recalls this is a there's a there's a thing in Sheffield called the National Centre for Popular Music, which was a a, a, a building which was constructed and it looked like an old kettle basically and at the height of our sort of careers musical careers we we were asked to um we were asked to launch the national center for popular music so basically we were asked to mime one of our songs whilst being winched onto the top of this building and it was broadcast on um it was broadcast on on uh, bbc2 look north um early early 1998 and, and I thought we've we've done it. We've absolutely, we've done it here. We've we've got a deal. We're going to be massive. And um, the the actor John, if you remember this guy, a guy a comedian called John Shuttleworth. He he yeah. was the sort of narrator throughout. It was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. And we got a lot of work from it, but we didn't quite get the deal. And um, and after that, I, I thought it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. This it's just not going to happen. We continued and and continued to write music and and so on and so forth, but. It just never, it, after that, the spirit waned a little bit, to be honest. And it, mm. it became, and, and that's a difficult place to be when, when you've got other individuals because they might not be in the same place. And I sort of knew that's not going to happen. And um, yeah, we, we didn't, we, after a while, we sort of, it became, um, it became less and less in terms of the music and more and more in terms of, of business. And, and, and again, you know, work's a thing, work is a thing where, I don't. I, I don't get up and say I'm going to work today. I never. I never say those words because I. I. I enjoy it, so it's not work to me. It's. It's something I do, which I enjoy doing. So I don't. I don't think of it and perceive it as work. So it was again something which was the band was replaced a little bit by by this sort of thing that I wanted to do and wanted to achieve, and I got a buzz off it, and um, and 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 then you know towards. The last couple of years we've sort of reconvened a little bit and we've got our own little rehearsal space that we rent and and now it's just for fun it's just right. it's literally just for fun and we can go in there some sometimes you know we, we tend to do it once a week 
and um, sometimes you know once a fortnight uh, we just speak to each other we just have we have a natter for an hour and then we're like oh we better better do play some songs and stuff so it's uh, it's it's a, it's taking on a completely different sort of um you know a, a different guys if you like in terms of why we do it and how we do it um, nothing serious you know we've played the odd gig in the last couple of years but um i certainly wouldn't want to be getting in the back of a van and traveling up the m1 and, and yeah. so on so in our right. heady days and, and so how did it develop at, at mortgage talk then so that the, the band's maybe been put on a, a back burner and yeah. look i know that the you know mortgage talk became an absolute you know massive business monster. writer yeah absolute <laughs> monster which was you know which was great so so how did yeah, things yeah. play play out for you there yeah, I, w- I was an advisor there for uh, I, when I first went to Mortgage Talk. I, interestingly, I went to work in one of the estate agents they had, which was which was good. Um, then then I came back in and went on the telephone, and and we we, we cultivated this sort of culture of a, an internal telephone based, more direct type of using. Interestingly, that was that coincided with the an- advent of the internet, being able to apply online to blenders and so on and so forth. So it, it was again, it was a, it was a progressive time. Um, and it became a big entity. And, and, and as these things go, I had an ambition of moving up and I managed a small team for a while, then a bigger team for a while, then a region and so on and so forth. And then um, I was appointed the sales director uh, in the business um, around about 2008, 2009, which coincided with a, um, a, a, a gentleman coming into the business by the name of John Hassel, who was the CEO of Mortgage Talk. And I, and I learned probably singly the most I've ever learned off anybody uh, from that guy, you know, in terms of managing th- people, process. And, and I think the, one of the big things he taught me, which was interesting, and I'd never really analysed it until that point, because my head was down, is equals of managing a business, a, an entity, as opposed to just managing myself and a team. It, it, was, it was about business. And, and yeah, I learned, I learned a, an absolute stack from him. And I still do now, you know, I still reflect, I still got, I still look back on my notepads and my, my stuff and, and go right that was a situation which was this what, what happened what and he taught me a lot about you know what 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 outcomes should be and, and what do you want the outcome to be and I, and I still recite them words now is is you know everything is about an outcome and and you know if you know what the outcome is then you can plan to get to that outcome or or you know it may take different roads and so I I, I, I progressed as I said to sales director in that business um of course, that coincided with the 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 the, the, rese- the financial recession, uh, which was an interesting time. And again, you know, I, I think whilst a lot of people fell by the wayside there, unfortunately, that business just kept itself together, and 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 it made it made you grow a very thick skin, and it made you very sort of driven and determined and single minded in a lot of ways. And um, and yeah, I, I, again, I learned an absolute ton from that in a, in a what would have been a very bad period of time for a business like that, which, you know, and it was, there was, there was some very stressful times. You, getting to the other side of it was probably, probably the biggest achievement we'd, we'd, we'd had collectively. And, um, and it wasn't, you know, there were, we laughed and we laughed at each other a lot through that because that's all you could do literally is just, is just, you know, um, have a bit of fun along the way, but it was, it was, it was um, it was an interesting period of time, but we got through it, and um, you know we progressed. And then uh, 2000, 2011, 2012, uh, P2 owned the business. Who's again still a great friend of mine. Um, my wife still actually works for him. Um, he um, he decided he wanted to sell the business. He'd, he'd, he'd got to the end of his his sort of time with it, and and that's what happened there. Then uh, he sold the business to MAB. Again, a great business, a great bunch of people. Um, my career path took a little bit of a, a wayward step or a sideward step because it wasn't a business that I wanted to work in person. That, that it just didn't sit right in terms of where I was and where they were and where we might sit together. So I decided to do something uh, not totally different, but just decided to park it and, and move on into another business, which you know I worked for uh, for that business for for six years, which was a good business. Built a business from a um, you know a, a small a small uh, position into a, a decent business and, and as the story goes I actually put that business into MAB <laughs> interestingly so yeah it's um, it, it, whilst it got parked for a period of time just progressed on something else 
Okay. And it, it seems like, so you, you, obviously not a job hopper. If we look at you know, that Halifax property mm -hmm. services, you were there for, a, for, for, for a, a significant period of time, moved to mortgage talk, circumstances change, but then you go to another business where you've been, where you, or where you were for, you know, for six, seven years. So, so you seem to, you, 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 you lay your foundations down when you find a particular business, you lay your foundations down and it looks as if there, there's a search then for a mentor within that business or somebody within that business who you, you can develop and get learnings from. I like I like that the, the bit I really the the bit I liked about um, not not so much property services that I was you know I was an advisor there that's what I was I wasn't anything I didn't aspire to be anything more that that's what I was that's where I definitely honed all the the advisory skills if you like at that time I think mortgage talk was a very progressive uh, you know journey in terms of starting as an advisor then management then senior management then sales director and, and so on and so forth and you get mentored along the way, which is important to listen to other people, you know, and 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 uh, good people, good quality people, where you think I can learn something, you know, here, it's, it's, there's some good stuff going off. Um, I, I think, um, you know, I got to that point, the bit I like, the bit I liked about, you know, after that, which was working in a business called Meridian Mortgages, which again, I'm very fond of, of, of the guys who own Meridian, is that was a business that gave me the autonomy um, to grow it. That that was the ambition. It was, it had got, when I started there, we got nine, eight, nine advisors, uh, good little business, really good little business, fundamentally a good business, new build business. But um, we went on a journey of very, over a six year period that the guys and I, in terms of growing that business. And when I, when I left that business, um, a couple of years ago so i've been there six years we got we got circa 40 advisors that worked there and i enjoyed going that business um you know it was great it, it was really really good working with the guys working with the developers working with the advisors and, and everybody was part of that business and again very fond memories of it it was good we had our times we had our moments as as you all do with these things but it was um it, we i got it to where i wanted it to get it and then it was time to sort of move on and do something else. It, it wasn't, in the end, it wasn't giving me what I wanted, to be honest, which is, again, no, no, no animosity or anything like that. It was a, you know, I've got it to where I need it to be. Here you go, you hand it over. Yeah. And you... Sometimes you just reach the end of the road, don't you? And it's, it's, it's all very yeah. amicable, but, you know, six, they say about the seven year age, so you, you didn't quite make the seven, seven years, but sometimes you just reach the end of the, the road, don't you? And, and I've always known you to be like an incredibly hardworking uh, guy. How, how you're involved in these businesses and as you're going through um, developing these businesses, you're working long hours, you're adding value, you're growing and you're operating in a sector, as I said, that you're becoming a, you know, an absolute expert in. H how's your health as you go through the, 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 all this? So we spoke about family earlier on, but how's, uh, how, how's your health, how's your body as you're going through the, yeah, the various yeah. cycles? Well, bearing in mind, it's coincided with, with 25 years of getting older. So... Uh... <laughs> So, so, so my own health is, is an interesting journey. Um, so, so I, you know, I, I've unfortunately been unwell for a, a couple of periods of time through, through, uh, through cancer, which is obviously not a great thing. Full stop. Now, now, whether or not there's a correlation between uh, that work and how hard you work and the stress and all the rest of it, um, it, it, it remains to be seen. To be honest, and um, you know, I'm a, I'm a fit, healthy sort of 49 year old, soon to become 50 um year old person you know i love i love physical exercise um i did do a lot of running i finished the london marathon the year before last so it gives you some sort of indication as to you know um you know i, li I like i like watching football i don't play football anymore i like watching football um but um yeah i, I think in terms of my own health is i've made recoveries from both uh, bouts of, of of you know serious illness and that's probably um by sure determination, just um, what what could have been a um, you know a period of time where you, uh, upon reflection, you, you think, well, I could have been in some sort of, sort of serious position there. Um, my philosophy has always been, and probably from the first time I had it, which was two thousand and seven, is it, it does change your mindset uh, for sure in terms of you can either sit there and wallow in the fact that you're not very well and all the rest of it, or you can choose to think, right, okay. Um, you know, if it's if it's um, if it's one in three of us, I'm glad it's me because I'm probably stronger than the other two people, so I'll get through it. And I still I still think that now. You know, and my philosophy again is all about what's 
maybe rightly or wrongly in terms of health is what's the worst thing that could happen well i've probably had the worst thing that could happen to me twice so and got through it um you know so um I, i'm 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 i wouldn't say i'm the healthiest in terms of where i've been in my life but i'd say i'm not unhealthy either i'm a, I'm a vegetarian that's what i do i don't don't you know that's that's a health choice um that that, that you know i feel physically fit so I've, I don't suffer from any other illnesses. I never have done, to be honest, other than the, the two sort of things that I had. But um, yeah, I, I think you've got, again, coming back to the work-life balance, you've got to take that time to go. I mean, we bought a, we got a, uh, interestingly, we got a dog last year, uh, me and my wife, um, and I'm out with him all the time, literally miles and miles and miles and miles. And I love that time because it's just freedom. You know, and it's it's just just walking. I enjoy that sort of stuff. It's really healthy for you. It's really good. It clears the mindset, allows you to think, allows you to just clear your head and just make some really you know important decisions. You know, I, I've had health issues which have maybe incapacitated me for a period of time, but I've not had you know the 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 the, the big C like you mentioned there. And how do you deal with that? So when you're actually sat there with the consultant and you know something's not 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 right, what? What runs through your mind and, and, and just what, what do those first few weeks look like? Yeah, they're horrific. They're, they're, they're absolutely horrific because you have a, you, you, I'm quite mentally quite a strong person, but, and, and I'd sort of had a suspicion that, that that might be the case the first time, but, but nothing, nothing, nothing really prepares you for, for the, that, that conversation, if you like. And, and my, my wife sat in, the, sat in the doctor's office and he told us, and she will see, my wife was very upset. And, I, and I, I, it just sort of, it went over me at first and, and I had to really sit and think about it. And, you know, I didn't sit and think about it for long, I, I must admit, because I thought, I've just got to get up, I've just got to get through this. All the natural things go through your mind, family, friends, you know, what ifs, what if I can't do this? What if I won't be able to do that? But very quickly, I think, and again, it doesn't work for everybody this, and I understand that is, you just you just have to put yourself and go, right, what's the out, now what is the outcome? So very quickly you go, if I want that to be the outcome, so I want to be rid of it, how do I get to that point? What's the treatment you need to have? And, and so on and so forth. So the first time was a big was a big thing, obviously, because you, I was a young, I was a young man, but, was younger and um i was able to recover from it relatively quickly it's not a nice thing you go through the chemo and all the rest of it and that's that's quite stressful and for other people it's very very stressful to see that happen and then the second time interestingly was only uh, last year and um it i knew what it was <laughs> so i knew instantly what it was so uh, obviously that you do the normal thing like you do when you're a fellow you check it out and and I knew before I got there what it was um, and went for the scan. And, and it, it, it's basically a, a, a 12 year replay of the previous conversation. But this time, of course, you are mentally prepared for it because you know what the procedure is going to be. You know what you're going to go through. You know what the treatment's going to be. And, um, and again, you know, you, you've just got to mentally and it is really important is not to be down about this because it can be very easy to get caught in. And I've spoken to other people and other guys they've had and they've gone through, you know, terrible mental sort of issues and, and depression and so on and so forth. Uh, that's not, that's not me, fortunately. And I, and I, and I granted that I, I do know other people that have gone through that. It's terrible. And, um, but my outcome was my, my outcomes always very positive. It's a very positive mindset. Well, what about Lisa and the girls then? So how how, how affected are, are are they? So you're I would imagine you're uh, as this is all happening. You're delivering that very positive language, and you're talking about the that 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 end state, the outcome of it being everything's going to be everything's going to be okay. Yeah. I think I think I think for anything with families, I, I, and I think you know different families, you know, deal with things in very very different ways. I think I think I'm looked at in a very traditional way. It's a very traditional setup. We've got two girls, and you know they would they would say, "Oh, that's my dad," you know, and and that's my husband, and and therefore you've got to make. I, I had to make sure. I'm not sure it works for everybody. I had to make sure that nothing really changes that much. You know, it, it stays the same, uh, and these are just things that you you know, you just have to get through, you just have to get through and, and you've got to, you've got to project that and we will just get through it and that'll be that. And it's, 
and I suppose I've heard little snippets in the in the you know behind behind closed doors where I've not been involved and you, they were worried for a long period of time and, and probably still are and and even now you know Megan's ultra protective and just you tread on eggshells and and you know this whole COVID things are you know a real um, you know it's, it's just a real nightmare because. I, for a for a four month window, I literally couldn't leave the house full stop. Mm. You know, you get put on that list, and and then even when you don't go out for the first venture, you know, you, she's ringing you up, going, "What are you doing? Where are you?" And so on and so forth. So like the COVID just, place. Yeah, it's it's but it's nice to it's nice to be in that position. Uh, sometimes I get frustrated because I just think because oh, I am my own man and I am my own person. Yeah. But um, I, I understand why people would be like that. But um, but yeah, so the, the, the outlook is. Honestly, um, the outlook is 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 just to me is always bright. You're you're here once, make the most of it. Every day you get up. I don't like I said. I don't think consider work to be work because I enjoy it. And, and, and that's and I and I say this to a lot of the guys and you know when the stress and everything and the thinking about you know oh God, there's got to be something better than the blah 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 blah. And I go, you've got two choices to make. You can either choose to get out bed in the morning and get on with it and enjoy it and have fun. I know it's stressful, but at the end of the week. Did you achieve what you wanted to achieve and were you rewarded for it? Alternatively, if you want to go to something else because you don't enjoy it and you don't have, go and do it. Go and do that. It's not a problem. There'll be no, you know, there'll be, there'll be no sort of hangover from that. You've, you've got to choose. You've got to make that conscious decision to go, I'm going to do that and I'm going to make good of it and I'm going to enjoy it along the way. Because if you don't enjoy something, it's like anything else, go and do something. I'd say just go and do something else, mm -hmm. you know. Um, what, what about the, the 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 work at the time then, and the the colleagues around you? So going back to two thousand and seven, you're uh, with the mortgage talk guys. It's it's probably pre yeah pre John Hassel who was your your mentor, but yeah. you're you're in a fast paced business. Two thousand and seven, CEO, very buoyant year, followed by two thousand eight, two thousand and nine would have been very challenging. So what was what was the support like, and how how were the yeah, colleagues with you? Yeah, it was good. It was really, really good. I mean, I, I worked with a bunch of people there, you know, particularly a guy called Peter Birch and another guy called Andy Frankish. And, and um, they, they were just incredibly supportive, you know, and, and they have been ever since. And like I said, they remain my very good friends of mine. And we check in every now and we don't work together now, but we check in every now and again. And, you know, and and um, I think um, I think they understood, you know, that I mean, I was off for a six month period, really. You know, because it um, it took that long for different treatments and stuff like that. Because you just obviously, you know, you you knocked out by it for a period of time. But they were they were just fantastically supportive. You know, um, in terms of everything, position was held up, and I still got paid, and you know, and and I think that was probably on the back of a, you know, because because they know what you know, the the, the know how how hard working I was, and at the time, you know, and it's. You get rewarded for that, you know. You get rewarded for it uh, for sure. I think. I think the second time, which happened last year, I'd only actually recently um, started working with this particular business and a, and a gentleman called Ian Kelly, and got to know him, and I've got to know him very, very well. And he's a fantastic guy. And um, it was it was literally the same. I wasn't off, interestingly, for 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 as long a period. To be honest, it was a couple of months uh, for for the recovery. And um, it, you know, again, just remarkably. Uh, you know supportive reassuring all the colleague you know nothing's too much for anybody to cover and and you know and I owe them an indebtedness for that because if anything unfortunately does happen to them touch wood it won't but if it did I'd do it I would do exactly the same thing exactly the same thing you know and, I, and I've had a couple of them and indeed old colleagues come to me and go you know I'm feeling this way what do you think what would you suggest what's your advice and because because you know they know what I'm like uh, but yeah, you know, it's um, I, I, just 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 remarkably supportive. Some good people out there, some really really good people, you mm -hmm. know, will good. help and support. They're there all the time. And and I suppose m m moving on to more recent times, then, and uh, I suppose I know you and Lisa have just become um, grandparents. So uh, well, how, how does about, that feel? Just about, yeah, just about to. Yeah, I'm not uh, well. It um, it took us by surprise. <laughs> So um, 
yeah, uh, Megan and her boyfriend, uh, my future son-in-law, were due to get married in May this year. And unfortunately, with the with the pandemic and everything, it got cancelled and postponed to next year. But um, she's quite a planner, quite a meticulous sort of like like me, really, a bit OCD. So she got it all timelined out. This is going to happen then. This is going to happen then. And I didn't think I, I knew they were planning after the wedding. But I so when it got cast, I thought they'll not they'll not go through with it. It'll be replanned, rescheduled. We well, didn't. So uh, she's fallen pregnant and she's due in April. So that that um, yeah, it's interesting. Now I'm at, at, we're over the moon. Well, I mean, we're absolutely besotted, de delighted. You know, we can't wait. Um, I suppose in the back of my mind, um, the, the, the the this sort of um, I'm I'm too young. <laughs> it feel like my it feel like yeah. me having another one. Um, but um, but no, I, I absolutely delighted. You know, so uh, yeah, I, I don't think it'll. Um, I mean, the setup is is pretty pretty tight as a family, so I don't think it's going to impact uh, a great deal uh, in terms of you know what we do day to day, week to week, month to month. But um, obviously, we'll be spending. I'd, I will want to spend a lot of time with her, and and when when we are asked. You know and stuff like that so yeah i've just it's just another uh, as i say it's just another it's, it, well, it's not just another it's um it, it's something you know which you when it comes around you go wow yeah the next but yeah. it's here and and so we can't wait now we, we absolutely can't wait so. well and i know you've got some amazing ambitions with um with ian and the the, the growth over the last 18 months two years with that business has been has been terrific as well so you, you kind of replicated where you've been uh, 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 previous businesses and the yeah the momentum is terrific there how, how, how's that work-life balance for you at the uh, at the moment because again i now focus you are on work and that end state and that out, outcome how, yeah. how are you coping with the yeah the work-life balance at the moment yeah but, you know it's 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 we've had we've had uh to say it's been a year of you know you know sort of unprecedented times we will probably never experience this again hopefully next year we'll turn back to something like I think for Ian and I, it's, um, you know, we've been, uh, it's been relentless all year for us. Um, so, so when you would typically get a business that goes, well, actually the downturn, there was a downturn, for sure there was a downturn, but, but what you've got is then you've got a different type of workload that you've got to manage, which is, you know, developers, um, you know, wanting information about lenders and, and so on and so forth constantly. And, and so you, you have to, you know, for, unfortunately or fortunately, the, the, the time that other people might have taken off you or furloughed or whatever it means, unfortunately, throughout that period of time, which is a very unfortunate situation, we weren't, we were the opposite. We worked even harder. You know, it's, it's like I got to October, the end of October and, I, and you know, we, we, we sat down in and I and, we, and he said to me, do you know how many days we've actually had off this year, you and I? And I said, I've got no idea. And he said, three between us. That's what we've had. Wow. It's like geez. So um so yeah, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a bit of time off with, with both of us. And then hopefully next year it will be a little bit different. But I think in terms of you know the, the, the sort of work life balances, yeah, you've got to do what you've got to do. You know, if you if you wanna if you wanna meet the objectives and the ambitions that you've got, you know, you've got to have a very, very clear plan of of you know what that is and how you're going to achieve it everything is about outcome i talk about it all the time it's all about outcome if you want that outcome then you've got to plan how you're going to get that outcome and our outcome is very defined you know we know what we want to achieve with the business with the growth of the business with you know with what we're doing with each silo within the business we know you know what the profit line looks like for each we know how many leads we need to bring in and and so it's it's very it's mapped out um but it but it's yeah it, it's 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 uh, you work long hours you, you're at the you're at your desk long hours but uh, as i keep saying you've got to take them from it you know you've got to you know if i get to the end of the week and i think I've, i would never i wouldn't call it stressful but i'd say it's been a you know intense week and then i get a call from a solicitor saying we just handed the keys over to mr and mrs brown thanks for that you go i'm dead happy with that yeah dead happy with that you know, some of my some of my guys are we, we're really starting to work on uh, ramping up referral business from existing customers who are referring us on. There's nothing finer, nothing finer than than one of the advisors saying, "Oh, I've done this mortgage for such and such, and they've referred this on." I just go tick in the box. I get I get a buzz off it. I get a buzz off it because I just go, "That's a great job I've done. Yeah. We've been referred on." Yeah. So there's 
you've got to you've got to take them all small successes, small wins, and just go. That was worth doing that. Yeah, but I think, and I've, I've used the word work life balance probably inappropriate. I think as we've gone through the discussion, because I think you know when I'm listening, listen to what you've got to say, it's, it's, it's clear you've got like a work life integration. So you just manage to integrate the, yeah. the, that 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 personal life with the the work life because as you. I've said a few times, you know, the workload is the workload. It's not going to go away. There are aspects that maybe only you can do, only Ian can do. So it's just a quite a case of just integrating and ensuring that you do both and you do both as effectively in the time you've got available as you possibly can. What work it's a bit of a journey, isn't it? It's a bit of a journey and 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 it can, and it can have challenges and it can have upsides and downsides, but you know that's what we're that's what we do that's what we've bought into that's the job yeah. that's what we're here to do you know is people entrusting you and, and they, they trust you to do things for them you, you know and get and get a result and get an outcome and if and again again if you don't want to do just go and do something else yeah, it's, it's not a problem it's a good philosophy know, but, yeah, I was, I was going to say, so when obviously becoming a grandparent, it's on the it's on the horizons. That's going to be incredibly exciting for you. But what about on, on, on the work front then? So this year has, has, has been you know, incredibly challenging as we've as we've touched on. But what are you most excited about from a, a work perspective in 2021? Yeah, again, it's a continuation of growing, a, of growing a, a successful business, you know, working with with good quality people. Um, you know, sharing good quality, you know, ideas and 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 the like with with staff and processes and embedding those processes, and seeing those processes work. So I, I think for us, you know, if you were to if you were to sort of put a you know what what's what what would be success? We'll we'll, we'll we will finish as a business this year on circa 1750 mortgages, you know, um, which is which is probably double the amount that we were doing three years ago. I think for next year, it's it's a it probably is a year of of pragmatically consolidation in terms of what you know what's out there uh, and what you're working on. I've I've got different silos that we're working on: so new build, retention, protection, uh, Chartwell FS, buildings and contents, and I, and I'd like to see all of those you know with with a sort of 15, 20 percent increase. Mm -hmm. And we've got plans and provisions to do that. And if and if we achieve that, not if we achieve it, when we achieve it, there'll be there'll be markers in the sand where we can go right now. We can move on to the next level and 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 the growth of a business. And it's funny, Ian. Ian said to me, um, he said it to me twice. This he said to me, why why don't you just go on your own? You should just set up your own business. And and it's really interesting that because I have contemplated it many many times over the years and reflected upon it, but. I like what I really like is I like the collaboration between you know a, 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 a two minds or three minds uh, and, and at mortgage talk it was actually four or five and I and I like that that trade off you know because you're learning all the time and and this job can be quite intense at times and you've got to bounce things off people well, occasionally I'll ring you and I'll say to you what do you think to this and you'll do the same and yeah. it might be completely unrelated to your business or my business but you're able to pick the phone up and I've probably got. I've probably got six people in the industry that I would lend as yourself and and the like that I would still do that. And I got I've got this. What 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 do you think? What what was mm. what would you do? And and I, and I know that I'll get a very balanced point of view, you know, mm. because uh, and that's collaboration. That's collaboration with your colleagues, and friends, and you know, and in terms of getting to where you need to be. So yeah, my ambition is to keep growing the business successfully, profitably. Mm. Um, you know, working uh, working with Ian and the guys is 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 great. It's, um, it's been terrific. It's been terrific. I've learned, I, you know, again, I, I continually learn. I learn loads of stuff all the time. All the time, I learn stuff. I think yeah, you know, we've covered loads in the yeah the time we've been speaking together. And yeah, you know, I'm really grateful you shared the yeah the the, the, the health um, bit of insight really because again, I know it's not it, it, it's not easy. Um, but that positivity, that pragmatism you've got, that optimism you've got, you know, in the, you know, even the most challenging of circumstances, it, it, it's, it obviously it's been something that just it, it's it's a it's part of your DNA. What about the, the, you know, what, what 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 kind of hints and tips when it's not part of somebody's you know DNA? What hints and tips would you give to maybe some of the listeners, some of the advisors and yeah. and, and and brokers who are uh, uh, maybe watching or listening to this in terms of just overcoming your know, real adversity yeah 
I, I think I think one of the biggest one of the biggest issues that people have generally, not not just in, in our industry, is people have the, the natural default position with with humans generally is they'll dwell on things, they'll they'll hold it and they'll they'll keep coming back to the same place. And and Ian's got a, Ian's got a fabulous saying. It's it's absolutely fabulous, and he'll say he'll say to people all the time, face into the problem face into the problem and 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 if you can't face it then share the problem with someone else because you'll get a different point of view your mind naturally will think of different things if you're held in a spot for a long period of time you're thinking about the same thing and you can you can definitely overthink Mm -hmm. it it's like when i was ill i didn't dwell on it i I, now maybe afterwards you probably think i should have thought about that a little bit longer but but there's no point because there's no there's no good for anybody doing that. Just move, keep moving forward, mm-hmm. you know. And you'll find you'll find different ways because your thought process is very different when you move forward. Yeah, look, it's a it's a terrific approach, and uh, yeah, as I say, I'm really grateful for yeah for you for, for your time today. And um, you know, as part of the yeah, I suppose the the, the the campaign, I'm really grateful that you've accepted and you, you you're a keen, enthusiastic supporter of what we're trying to achieve. I'm really grateful Absolutely. for yeah for that. And as we look to share um, as part of the yeah the campaign, you know the the, the, the people that um, you're know, like yourself that. Um, are available to reach out to and have conversations with then um yeah i'm just you know usually grateful for yeah for the support you've yeah, offered fine. and um yeah I, i'm delighted to call you a friend proud to call you a friend and uh, yeah wish you all the best for yeah for for christmas and uh, the festivities and i you know, doubt we'll catch up uh, early part of the, of the new year you too yes you too all right thanks for your time